speed. Of all the challenges that man places before himself, none is more exciting than the quest for speed. What is it that motivates some people to go faster and even faster? For many, it's the thrill of speed, the feeling of exhilaration, power, and freedom. And there are many ways to go fast. On foot, in boats, cars, jets, skiing, or even roller coasters. Sometimes it's the result of the need for more efficiency in travel or communication. The Shinkansen Super Express is the fastest train ever, attaining speeds of up to 200 miles per hour. And some people just want to go faster than anyone else has ever gone. Whatever the motivation, people have been trying to go faster and faster for a long time. In the beginning, we could only go as fast as our feet could carry us. Speed meant survival. You had to be fast in order to eat. But over the years, speed has come to reflect man's quest for achievement and the need to be better for the sake of challenge and excellence. 1954 was a big year in sport. The mile of the century was run at Vancouver between John Landy of Australia, now leading, and Roger Bannister of England, both of whom had previously broken four minutes. Pulse tingling drama unfolded on the final turn where Bannister overtook Landy and drove on to victory with one last reserve of incredible stamina and will. Both men broke four minutes. Sports history was made. With the invention of powered vehicles, man could go even faster than on foot. He just couldn't resist going even faster, always pressing to go faster than he had before. Of course, we don't always succeed the first time, so we try, try again. In the 1940s and 50s, with the advent of jet power, we took yet another step forward in the quest for speed by powering vehicles on the ground as well as aircraft with these new jet engines. One of the first jet cars took Donald Campbell on a wild ride going over 300 miles per hour. Craig Breedlove cracked the 600 mile per hour barrier in his jet powered vehicle to set a new world land speed record over 20 years ago. In 1986, a powerful rocket car blasted Richard Nobles up to 633 miles per hour, which is the current world land speed record. But it's only 20 miles per hour faster than the record set by Craig Breedlove. There is a new method of travel that has been catching the imagination of many snow lovers as the way to fly across mountain meadows and over that next hill. These vehicles can travel as fast as 90 miles per hour and are said to be one of the most exhilarating winter rides.
drag racing is pure speed. How fast can you go fast? And if there is anything more exciting than drag racing on land, it's drag racing on the water. In the category of drag boat racing, there are only a few drivers in the world that are qualified to drive these rockets on water. These craft accelerate from zero to 200 miles per hour in three seconds. There is no building up to it. You just slam the throttle down all the way. Automobile racing is one of the most popular forms of racing around. There are all kinds of different races all over the world, but nowhere is there more and varied racing than in the USA. think that these contemporary drivers would know how to have a good crash, but they just don't have them like they did in the good old days. A hundred mile stock car race of Langhorne, Pennsylvania turns into a nightmare come alive. By the smoke, many of the drivers seem helpless to avoid the piled up wrecks in front of them. Ten drivers were hurt too seriously in what will long remain stock car racing's most spectacular cracker. One of the most prestigious auto races in the world is Le Mans. These are some of the fastest vehicles on four wheels. You can just feel the world rushing by as you drive at speeds up to 180 miles per hour. another race. Le Mans is the race. There is something about Le Mans that absolutely uh, outshines all other motoring events in the world. 
it's a childhood dream for me. You know, I, I had a go-kart when I was eight years old and the pictures of my father racing against Lance Verventlow and Scarabs and, I, and Richie Ginther and Chuck Days. And for me to be racing right now and be at Le Mans, you know, I've got goosebumps. It is an endurance event. Um, it does test the machine and the systems and the man to his absolute limits. The Mulsanne straight, I would suppose, separates this from any other race in the world. Every single time you go down that straight, I don't care who you are, you are well aware that you are traveling at speeds that are not equal anywhere else in motor racing. And you do it lap after lap after lap after lap, and it goes on forever and ever and ever. there's no other motor racing event like Le Mans. These drivers are always chasing the limits of speed. Le Mans is an endurance test as well as a race. The drivers, if they survive, will have driven over 24 hours straight. That night at 3 in the morning, I, I sometimes wondering what in the places I'm doing here. Can I see the flagger? God, I wonder if that was just an oil flag I just went by. It, there's, it's a lot like skin diving at, at midnight. You know, you, you don't really see. You've, you've got a little bit of light, but you seem like you're always overrunning those lights. I was behind a group of cars, and up ahead was a lot of sparks coming out of the left-hand side of this Porsche. So I, I went to the left, and I saw something fly. Uh, I assume it was a piece of bodywork. I was traveling well over 150, and I hit it, and I was just hoping I wasn't going to get launched to the stars. Of course, there are other exciting rides on four wheels. toy technology to the limits. Hot dogging isn't only for land lovers. Hot doggers can also do it on the water. Not satisfied with staying on the ground, man has always dreamed of flying. And here I am, you can look this device over. It appears heavy, it's light. Well, that sounds okay if it works, but if Bertie doesn't fly when he makes that jump, he's going to get a real cold bath. Here he goes. splash -o. Well, he got the bath all right. But is little water discouraged? Not a bit. Just wait a moment and you'll see. Now his feathers are all dry again. He's had a good dinner of canary seed, so maybe this time he'll really do it. He's going to soar gracefully off the rock, so he says. Keep your eye on the birdie. Cuckoo, cuckoo. The Wright brothers were the first to get things off the ground. 
In 1927, Charles Lindbergh made history by flying from New York to Paris in 33 and a half hours. Chuck Yeager brought us into the jet age, flying the hottest new developments in faster, more powerful aircraft. Once we got the airplane through Mach 1 and it didn't disintegrate, there was a feeling of relief. After the X-1, we got into a lot of other test programs like the X-3, X-4, X-5, then the X-1A, and stepped our speed on out to about 1,600 miles an hour, around 200, two and a half times the speed of sound. The X-1A, we uncovered problems with the tail being too small. We lost control of the airplane at some 80,000 feet, and the airplane ended up in an inverted spin at 34,000, popped it in a normal spin, then popped it out of a normal spin, came back and landed. The canopy was busted off the airplane, but and my suit had inflated, but I figure that that was just about as close as I come to buying the farm. It was interesting to uncover new problem areas and to solve them because we were really, during the late 40s and early 50s, making quantum jumps in speed and altitude and really opening up new frontiers. Pushing aerodynamics to the limit, the F-14 is just this side of levitation and teleportation. The slightest tug back on the stick will send you shooting straight up at over 1,000 miles per hour. The Blue Angels and Thunderbirds show what it takes to be the right stuff. That's the word to describe the SR-71, the fastest jet in the world. It's also the word for how much training is needed to fly one of these bullets with a pilot. And 20 years before the space shuttle, the X-15 carried pilots into space, then landed on a runway like an airplane. The Apollo missions took us all the way to the moon, one of the ultimate achievements of all time. And what does he do when he gets there? Now here are some real far out speed freaks. From dune buggy to moon buggy, the sea of tranquility 1000. Just getting a little off-road action, of course. over 25,000 miles per hour, the fastest speed ever reached by a human being. On the return flight of one of the Apollo missions from the moon, the spacecraft was catapulted by the gravity of the moon and the pull of the Earth to reach a speed exceeding 25,000 miles per hour. Getting back down to Earth, speedboats are a whole new wave of speed on water. Offshore racing takes a special kind of vehicle and special kinds of drivers. These craft demand a crew of two, three, or even four drivers to handle them. One handles navigation, one handles the throttle, and another may handle the instrument readings of the powerful engines. They are specially built to handle the six to ten foot swells and rough waters that they may encounter in a race on the ocean. And there he goes, but it's still number two, Raymond Anderson. Anderson, out of Madison, Tennessee. You can take to the lakes and rivers with these Formula One boats and speedboats. 
Hydroplanes are one of the most spectacular of all vehicles. They use 3,000 horsepower Rolls-Royce engines and attain speeds in excess of 200 miles per hour. Hydroplaning is speed. <laughs> Danger? It's pretty dangerous. I don't think I'd want to be driving with those boats. They're, they're searching for something, and I think they're finding it out in the water. It's a very personal thing. It's a, it's a personal challenge to yourself. People ask me, are you afraid to drive boats? And I answer them, yes, I am. the ultimate test of man and machine. 1,000 miles of grueling, bone-bashing, vehicle-crunching shock treatment. Only the hardiest need apply. think of a single action as a rapid fire gun primarily because as you know and knew before you got here that the single action must be cocked first every time for every shot with no exception well i thought it would be of interest to see just how fast the old single action really is for let's say a couple of shots anyway so what we've done here is set up two targets now what i'll do here is load this gun with two shots now what i'll do is draw the gun once wasn't that cute <laughs> i'll cock it which i must do come over fire hit the first balloon or at least try Cock it again, come over, fire, hit the second balloon, and do that as quickly as possible. I must cock and fire the gun twice with no exception. One, two. I cannot simply pull the trigger. The gun cannot be fired this way. Please check the gun and ammunition. Make sure both rounds have been fired. In this tape, you saw me shoot those two shots. And right off the top of your head, you said, now, come on, that didn't happen. OK, it did happen. How do you do that? And that's a fair question. So let me try to answer it for you. First of all, there are variations of that. And you can do more than two shots. But I discovered years ago that uh, two shots are hard enough to believe, let alone three, maybe six. You say, what are you talking, six? Oh, yeah, we'll get further than that later. But right now, talking two. All right, when I, when I pull that off, what I'm doing here is I'm, when, I, when I go for that gun, I grab the gun, pull the trigger, bring the gun out. And the thumb and the little finger are, in fact, firing the two shots in one sweep of the hand. I must maintain the, the, the pull. I do pull the trigger. I pull the trigger once. Then I come across the thumb, cock and fire the first shot, and the little finger cocks and fires the second shot. You put that all together, and that's what you get, two shots. Of course, you don't see anything with black fire, but then you didn't see anything when I did fire, did you? So your results are the same. What a piece of work is man. How noble in reason, how infinite in faculty. In form and motion, how like an angel. In apprehension, how like a god. Speed is not just a roaring, hair-raising experience, but can be a beautiful feeling of freedom, soaring across, over, and through nature's varied landscapes. In the quest for speed, People and machines in motion can approach the grace and precision of ballet. Perfection in motion.
This is not the way most people go skydiving. Most go up in a plane to a nice safe altitude and have a nice safe jump. But not these folks. No, these folks have to add a little adventure to the much too tame sport of skydiving. They jump off skyscrapers, bridges, cliffs and canyon rims to get the real thrill of speed going straight down. Although motocross is a land sport, these guys seem to be airborne most of the time. But how fast is too fast? Sometimes, in a brief moment of mechanical failure, human error, or bad judgment, the threat of danger becomes a reality as bodies and machines go hurtling through the air or spinning out of control or crashing into walls. The end result can be injury or even death. there are the not-so-serious calamities. And the people responsible for creating these indignities are the underachievers. Of course, those who underachieve must suffer the consequences. These events are tributes to man's frequent inability to rise to the excellence he has so vigorously sought. Oh well, as we said before, try, try again. history, we've seen man's quest for greater and greater speed. How fast can man go? As fast as his imagination will take him. Rushing to the limit, hear the engine whine. The chosen few defy the odds, gracing the edge of time. 